this Sunday's Gospel, the Luke and Jesus commands the disciples, as you, plural, wish people to treat you, treat them in like manner. The Matthean Jesus says, whatever you wish people would do for you, do for them yourselves. The sage Hillel, a contemporary of Jesus, is reported to have said, whatever is hateful to you, do not do to anyone else. That is the whole law. All else is commentary. Go and learn it. There were many variations on this wisdom saying in antiquity. Luke chapter 6, verses 27 through 38. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear, I say, attach to your enemies. Do good to those who reject you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you attach to those who attach to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners stick to those who stick to them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount but rather attach to your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your patron is merciful. Stop judging and you will not be judged. Stop condemning and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in return be measured out to you. The Mediterranean cultural value behind this golden rule is reciprocity. This word reciprocity describes a variety of give and take or back and forth exchanges between individuals or villages, usually along one of three patterns. General reciprocity balanced reciprocity, and negative reciprocity. General reciprocity means an open sharing of goods based on generosity with no hope of return, or where return is postponed or forgotten. This characterizes Mediterranean family relationships. The Matthean Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 9, Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? This is general reciprocity. Parents meet the needs of their children, but do not keep a strict accounting of the child's debt. It's enough that the child reciprocates with attachment, love, and honor, and gratitude. Balanced reciprocity characterizes neighborly relations among Mediterraneans, an exchange based on symmetrical concern for the interests of both parties. Return is expected in equal measure in balanced reciprocity quid pro quo. Typical of Mediterranean business relations, balanced reciprocity is a satisfaction of needs that is mutually beneficial. The Luke and Jesus describes and criticizes balanced reciprocity very well in this Sunday's Gospel. Balanced reciprocity means loving in return, sticking together, expecting return to those who love you first or who stick with you first. Balanced reciprocity means doing good in return to those who do good to you first. Lending now in the secure hope of being repaid or of being able to borrow from the same person at a future time is another example of balanced reciprocity. Meals figure very prominently in the Gospel called Luke. Invitations to meals fall into the category of balanced reciprocity. In the Mediterranean world of Jesus, each invitation to a meal implies a forthcoming invitation in return. Negative reciprocity characterizes relations with strangers in the Mediterranean world. It is a relationship in which one party hopes to take advantage of the other party to gain without having to repay anything at all. This pattern of relationship called negative reciprocity gave rise to the Middle Eastern custom of hospitality, which tried to counter it. Hospitality in the Middle East is granted mainly by Middle Eastern men and exclusively to strangers. Such hosts protect strangers from the relationships of negative reciprocity in this alien village setting and engage instead in a general reciprocity with their guests. 
They expect no return. Indeed, in the Middle East, if you tried to return hospitality, that would be an insult. Redistributive relations were typical of the large-scale agrarian societies of antiquity, such as Egypt, Syro-Palestine, and Rome. They involve pooling resources into a central storehouse, usually by means of toll collecting or taxation and tribute, under the control of a hierarchical elite that could then redistribute them through the mechanisms of politics and elite kinship. My friends, redistribution relations are always asymmetrical and primarily benefit those in control. The temple system of first century Judea functioned as a system of redistributive relations. It sucked in and stored surplus from the surround, taking from the poor peasant majority. Who is the Lucan Jesus addressing in this Sunday's Gospel? He is speaking to those who possess an extra coat, people who can actually lend money, and from whom others can beg. Therefore, it's pretty obvious that the advice given by Jesus in Luke chapter 6, verses 27 to 36, this Sunday's gospel, is clearly directed to the elite, 2% of the total population. Only such Judean and Mediterranean elites would have a wardrobe bearing two or more outer garments. Only such Judean and Mediterranean elites would be the targets of beggars and thieves. Only these elites would have surplus wealth to lend. The Luke in Jesus is asking the elite to behave toward strangers just as they would behave toward members of their own household. He is urging the haves to treat have-nots as if they were family. He discourages negative reciprocity, that is, the attempt by the elites to take advantage of those in need. Remember that this Sunday's Gospel continues from the same section of the Gospel we call Luke that was last Sunday's Gospel, the Sermon on the Plain with the Beatitudes, all of the Luke and Jesus advice is given with those beatitudes still ringing in Luke's elite audience's ears. Most honorable are the socially unfortunate, or as we translate it in our poor English translations, blessed are the poor. The Luke and Jesus says, stop judging and you will not be judged. Judging in honor-shame societies like the Mediterranean world of the Bible is largely a matter of stereotyping usually entailing negative judgment or condemnation. Stop stereotyping and you will not be stereotyped. Stereotyping is a common cultural trait in the Mediterranean world Jesus challenges. The categories elite and socially unfortunate, or poor, are products of stereotyping. This culture of the Bible is not at all introspective. In fact, Middle Eastern North African personalities like Jesus and his contemporaries are anti-introspective. This culture routinely judges by external appearances. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 for a prime cultural example. All natives of Crete are liars, vicious brutes, and lazy gluttons, says the pastor, stereotyping Cretan people in Titus chapter 1, verse 12. Judeans do not share in common with Samaritans, we are told in stereotypical fashion by John chapter 4, verse 9. Can anything good come out of Nazareth, we are told in John chapter 1, verse 46? As repulsive as such judgments may sound to our 21st century Western ears, they were very common in the ancient world of Jesus and Luke. Mediterranean peoples constantly pasted labels on other people. Sinner, tax collector, woman of the city, artisan's son, whitewashed sepulcher, etc., this was a means of controlling and restricting their social interactions, shorthand honor designations that pigeonhole people and thereby both describe and determine their honor status. The stereotypes provided others with a guide and control for social interaction. Such name-calling attributed a social status to people, whether it fit or not. The tragedy was how easily the stereotype stuck. My friends, the Luke and Jesus rejection of such stereotyping efforts also resonates in the echo of the Beatitude. Most honored by the God of Israel, of course, are the socially unfortunate, the poor, the stereotyped and rejected. The God of Israel alone reads hearts and knows people's true honor rating.
The familiar Western proverb declares, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. We Western people like to believe that we are immune from stereotyping and the exploitation it permits. But our Mediterranean ancestors in the faith, like Jesus and the evangelists we call Luke, would vigorously disagree. Even many Westerners would probably concur. It may be time to revise our Western proverb.